Good luck. Welcome back to CFC TV. This is my review of the Chelsea versus Maccabi Tel Aviv match in Tel Aviv. Well, actually, it was played in Haifa, but in Israel, anyways. Um, and we won the game 4 0. Um, I'm going to start with the lineup again. It was Begovic and goal as expected. And then I was a little bit surprised that, Ivano, uh, that Ivanovic didn't play because as Billy Quetta started on the right, it was Terry and um, Cahill, which I was a little bit surprised as well to rest Zuma not the almost 35-year-old John Terry. Um, and Baba Rahman started as left-back. The holding midfielders were just like against um, Norwich, Fabregas and Matic. And the three behind the striker were Hazard, Oscar, William. And Costa was up front. Um, in the early stages of the game, they had a good chance, to be honest. And um, then we started controlling the game and scored after a corner. Um... It was a corner by William, obviously. Cahill headed a good save, but a keeper went to the inside of the post, jumped inside the six-yard box again, and Cahill just poached it in, basically. And um, we didn't really... Let me think. I don't think we had another huge chance in the first half. I don't think. Um, but Tel Aviv got a player sent off after a stupid tackle, really. Just a stupid kick. It was, uh, I don't know if... Um, You've seen the classic on the weekend, but Isco got sent off for a similar challenge. Um, so yeah, we went into half time and then we came out and it was it was the same again. Like they started better than us. It was really weird. They were down to ten men and some somehow they were playing better than we did. Um, but um, then John Terry picked up an injury. He was it was like in a in a battle and he sort of fell on the floor awkwardly and he had to be carried off on a stretch sitting up not lying down but still it's a bit worrying I highly highly doubt that he will be fit to play Spurs even if it's only on Sunday and it's Tuesday but I just can't see that obviously that's a big loss for us organisation obviously heart that we need in the derby against um, Spurs but um, yeah and Basically, you know, the the game got we got a free kick after uh, who got fouled? I think Costa got fouled. I'm not sure anymore. Um, and then the game got stopped to for Terry to get um, stretched off, and, and then William came up again and scored his I think his sixth free kick of the season, which is obviously incredible, absolutely incredible. Another great free kick. Um, and then not too long after that. It was um it was really weird. I was um just about you know it was a great ball by by Fabregas and um, Oscar instead of trying to have a shot sort of tried to lay it off but there was nobody there and I was really annoyed at him already. But basically, I looked at my phone for a second and when I looked at the TV again, Baba Rama put in a, an amazing cross and um, Oscar just headed it in from like four or five yards or something. So um, he did score eventually, Oscar, but still he should have done better on the one before. Um, and then in extra time, Zuma made a 4-0 after another corner. And um, yeah, Zuma obviously came on for John Terry after he was injured. So I'm going to talk about the players individually. Um, Begovic was great. He had two very good saves. One, I think, no, both, both were in the second half. He had one decent save in the first half as well, but very, two very, very good saves in the, in the, in the second half. Aspilicueta was, was good. He had a few sloppy moments in the first half, but, you know, he got forward a lot, put in good crosses, like, just involved in, in play, really. Um, our back line, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of Cahill and Terry anymore because they're just too slow, especially against a team like Tel Aviv, which, like I said, would obviously play on the counter-attack, and which they did. And then we got caught out, caught out quite quite a bit, quite a few times as well. So um, that wasn't great, but you know we dealt with it. I got another clean sheet in. Um, Baba Rahman, going forward, he was very very good. Um, he obviously gave the assist to the three 0 goal, but um, defensively he wasn't. I don't know. Some people might disagree with me on it on this one, but I didn't think he was very good defensively. He got pushed off the ball very easily, pushed out of challenges very easily. Um, wasn't in the perfect position a lot of the times. So yeah, I'm not I'm not quite sure. Going forward he's he's class, you know, he's good in the ball, he's very fast, great crosses, but um you know he played he started 
four games for us now, I think. Warsaw, Tel Aviv twice, and Aston Villa. I think I think those four games he started. Oh, did I miss one now? Oh, and Stoke. And Stoke against, yeah, and Stoke in the league. Um, not sure if he played in the League Cup, but in the league as well, I remember. And in none of those games, he seemed very good defensively. The, his best game was probably the home game against Tel Aviv. But considering who those opponents were, like Walsall is League One, I think. Um, Tel Aviv isn't the greatest team, let's be honest. Aston Villa is far off being a great team at the moment. And um, in Stokes, Shakiri is a great is a great player who he was up against, but Shakiri tore him apart. Like, um, and excuse me, that's my neighbor's dog. Um, Fucking hell, let me close the windows. What a stupid dog. Um sorry about that. And yes, I'm I'm not I'm not quite sure if I play him against Spurs. Like um who would be up against him? I don't know, obviously it depends on how they line up, but um you know, I'm I'm not quite sure. I, as I said, I really liked him going forward, but defensively he wasn't gr good for me. He was okay, but, you know, you have to consider who we were playing against. And Spurs is a lot better than Tel Aviv, so, you know what I mean. Um, then Fabregas was good, in my opinion. He had a few sloppy passes in the first half, like a few times where he took a little bit too long on the ball and got like got taken away from him. But um, he had a few amazing passes, like switch of play, like sort of high through balls, or like normal through balls, basically. Great, great passes, a lot of them. So nothing to blame him for, in my opinion. Matic was good again. A lot of good interceptions, good um, deliveries as well. Like good, like just decent display by him, to be honest. Good display. Um, Hazard, you know, he had good moments, like um, when he ran past players and he had a great shot, which which was saved by an incredible save by the goalkeeper. And just after that, he saved another. Good shot by um, Aspilicueta as well. So the keeper really helped them a lot in that game. But um, once he was um, a little bit too lazy to track back defending, which Mourinho really wasn't happy about. And then, you know, he misplaced the pass. He tried to cut out to William, but, um, you know, he didn't give it enough curl and it went out. And, um, you know, Jose basically just took him off straight away. Which, you know, Jose has a very big ego and he's a very temperamental man. And... Um, I think his temperament took over him at that moment because because of one misplaced pass that you know didn't lead to anything negative by the opponent. You know you really shouldn't take a player off for that. I mean you know you never know if he would have taken him off anyways. But um, basically just after he misplaced that pass, um, Mourinho told uh, Pedro to 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 get changed. You know so that's a bit weird, especially because Oscar until he scored he made a few decent runs in the first half, but otherwise he was invisible really. So um didn't really understand that, wasn't really a fan of that. As I just mentioned, Oscar, um he had a few decent, you know, not 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 particularly great runs like going past players, but you know, good positioning, making himself available for, for passes. Not that he did a lot with it then, but you know, he was available, good 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 position, as I said, good movement. But um once we had a really good counter I think incredible pass by Fabregas through the line, but um he I mean, he's not the fastest, but he still should have done better with it. He held it up and waited, and um, they were, then all the defenders were back, and then he laid it off. And um, I can't remember who had the shot. I think Fabregas did, and he's no Pedro did, and he skied it. I think well, I can't remember who it was. Anyways, you know, Costa, uh, Oscar just took too long there, so I wasn't really too happy with him. Obviously, he scored, which is good, but um, otherwise, in there, William was probably our best player again. You know. Um, he obviously scored another free kick. Decent game overall. Not his best, but decent game. And Costa. Um, I'm really getting fed up with that guy. Like, um, you know, you can clearly see that he's trying. But um there was once it like just before half time he just didn't get into the box yet again, like to, to cover for a cross. And even Josie was furious with him, like they had like they were really moaning with each other, like walking down the tunnel. 
But he's just not where he's supposed to be at the moment. Like then he had two decent efforts in the second half. You know, in the first half he had one one goal as well, which got blocked like a good block. But you know, if he would be in the, in the right positions, he would have so many more chances to score and so many more easier chances to score as well. He just he just has to be there. Like the thing is, we don't have a better striker. I know people are saying let's play Remy, but Remy is not better than than Costa. You know, whenever Remy has started a game, he was never good. I think the only time Remy scored when he started was against Man City, and that was one of the easiest goals you can ever get, you know? I mean, he was there, I know, which Costa probably wouldn't be at the moment, but still, he Remy just isn't a, a striker that should start a game, in my opinion. But Cow is out and not doing well anyways, so um, as I said, we do need a striker, but we have to play Costa against Spurs again, but, you know, somehow Jose and him have to work out how... How to how to make him be in the right positions because you can't go on like that. It's just it's just so annoying to watch, like so annoying. Like, there was one situation uh, where he made himself available for a ball, which is good and fine. Like came back, and um, but then was st standing still, and then he got passed out to Baba, and everyone was running in the box. Even Aspiliqueta was in there, like William Hazard, Oscar. Fabregas, I'm not sure if Matic was in there as well, and he was the one standing outside the box, and all of the others were in the box, I mean, that is crazy, he's a striker, and he was the only one not being in the box, I mean, that's stupid, that's just stupid, um, but yeah, I mean, overall, a performance, I didn't like it, like, we had some good passing, we had, like, one, like, um, Oscar to Hazard, Hazard back heel to Oscar, oh no, was it to Costa? No, to, to to Oscar. Oscar gave it to Costa. Costa tried to square it to, to Hazard, but, you know, he was really well marked and, you know, sort of pushed slightly um, right at the moment. He tried to, you know, control it and it, it, it like, you know, it um, bounced off. Nothing he c I can blame him for, but, you know, good defending, to be honest. But that would have been an amazing goal if that would have gone even similar to their Crystal Palace goal away last season with the great passing. Um, but... In general, we we just weren't good. I mean, considering the opponent, they they had so many chances. Like, they could have scored two, three goals. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like two, three good chances, and then they had obviously two, three more half chances, basically. Which, if they were lucky or you know had a moment of magic or something, they could have scored as well. So um, that isn't very promising, if I'm honest. Going forward, obviously, if the striker isn't in the box in the right positions, it's very hard to, 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 to you know, control a game and score early on to kill it off. But um, especially considering that they were down to 10 men in the second half, they, they were the better team in the second half until we made it 2-0. Like, a good bit better than we were. Um, so I didn't like the performance. Like, it wasn't horrible, but it wasn't good. Um... You know, it's just weird. We played really well against Stoke in the league and lost 1-0 due to basically the only chance Stoke had with the Anatovic volley. Um, we played amazingly well against Norwich in the weekend, in my opinion, and just about won it 1-0. And now, today, we don't play well and we beat them 4-0. And in my opinion, especially how they played against us, Kiev is a lot better than and not Kiev, Tel Aviv is a lot better than Norwich. But still, that's just weird, isn't it? I mean, I'm not going to complain about it. I'd love us to not play that well and beat everyone 4-0. Bring it on. But, um, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Um, as I said, I don't think Terry will be fit for the weekend, but let's hope I'm wrong. Um, I really can't can't choose my, my lineup for the weekend. Because I fear that Jose will drop Hazard, but on the other hand, I think you can't not play a player like Hazard in such a big game. But I sort of fear that he won't. And um, I fear that Costa will do the same thing again, which he has over the last few weeks. I know he scored on the weekend, which was a good goal, but still he could have scored so many more with better finishing and better positioning. Um, so yeah, I really don't know who to play. But, you know, it's a weird it's a weird situation right now. Um Kiev beat Porto 2 0 in Porto. So um, we're at Porto and us are at 10 points now, and Kiev is at 8. The thing is, if we draw the, the, the last game against Porto, Porto and us are on 11 points. And um, if Kiev wins against Tel Aviv, they are on 11 points as well. You know, in the Champions League groups, they're just down to head to head, as I said. Um, 
But because we beat Kiev at home and drew away, we should be ahead of Kiev. But Porto beat us away. If, as I said, if we drew, draw at home against them, they would be ahead of us. But Kiev drew in Kiev against Porto and beat them in Porto. So Kiev should be ahead of Porto. So basically, Porto should be ahead of us and we should be ahead of Kiev. But Kiev should be ahead of Porto. So I just got told that apparently, if that happens, Kiev is top. With Porto second, I don't know why, and I don't know if that's true, but um, you know, let's just let's just win the game and not even worry about that. But I'm very confused. Like I hate that rule. Let's just make a goal difference. Like everybody understands that that makes complete sense. And if the goal difference is the same, like same amount of goals scored, same amount of goal conceded, then you can go to head to head. That is so much easier. Like it doesn't make sense to head to head straight away, in my opinion, anyways. But yeah. Um, Spurs is next. Let's kick on from here. Um, two wins in a row, two clean sheets in a row. I know we've had that before this season, but um, you know, bring it on. We have to start winning now. Um, we'll continue winning basically. And yeah, we can still finish top of the group. We just have to somehow win against Pod. It doesn't matter if it's 1 0, 2 0, 2 1, 3 1, 3 2, 10 to 9, or whatever. It doesn't matter as long as we beat Pod with top of the group, no matter what. Um, so that is good. And um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. It's probably a bit long again. Yeah, my apologies for that. Um, but you know, a lot of stuff to say. Um, I said if you if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I'm obviously here to make reviews. Sometimes I make previews as well. And if we, when we're getting closer to the January transfer window, I'm obviously going to talk about transfer rumours as well. I'm going to slot that in here just... You know, just to talk about it quickly, apparently we're tr we're preparing a £42 million bid for Obama Young from Borussia Dortmund, which would be a great signing, in my opinion. He's a great strike, he's rapid, and um, he obviously wouldn't be cup tied because Dortmund is playing Europa League, so that would be a great signing. Um, yeah, that was it for me. Keep the blue flag flying high. Um, and, you know, see you guys next time.